everyone, Dr. O here with another Dr. O Method YouTube video. On this channel, I'm going to talk to you about health and wellness issues and give you my perspective from a medical doctor's point of view. Before we get started, thank you to all my new subscribers. Okay, enough of that. Let's get started. A lot of you may have seen my first video on medical weight loss, and there were a lot of comments. I want to talk about one particular topic that was a hot topic in terms of the comments. What is happening? The medicine seems to have stopped working. It's not just what you're thinking in terms of some of the things I already said. There's actually some new insights I want to share with you, specifically on your metabolism. So get your notes out, get your pen and paper out. It's going to be really interesting. First, I want to talk to you about what happens when the scale is not moving. You're taking the medicines every week and you're getting appetite suppression, meaning you're not hungry versus taking the medicine every week. The scale is not moving and you're still as hungry as you were before. We're going to talk a little bit about what this means for you and how to change things up. Second, I want to talk to you about how the very process of losing weight may actually result in the scale slowing down. Losing weight? Stop losing weight? I don't understand, right? That's when nutrition comes into play. Okay, part one. What to do if you notice that you're not losing weight, just started taking the medicines, but your appetite is being suppressed. In other words, you are actually eating less. Remember fibrous fat from the first video? I know you do. So fibrous fat is that fat that tends to be on the inside of your body, maybe around your organs or some people, it's like hard stomach. And that's the fat that's super, super stubborn. When that fibrous fat is maybe softening, the scale often doesn't change. So my method is measurements. Before you start the program, take measurements. Take measurements of your whole body. How do I take measurements, Dr. O? Well, of course I have a solution for you because I love you. I have included in the comments a measurement tracker that you can download. I take measurements. This way you will be able to see that even though the scale may not be moving, you will notice your measurements getting smaller. This way you know that the medicine is indeed working. Yay! So now, unfortunately, there's the case where you're taking the medicine every week, the scale isn't moving, and you have no change in your appetite. What do you do then? This can occur for a few reasons. One reason could be that you're not at an effective dose. Remember, you start off at the lowest dose, and when you achieve appetite suppression, suppression, that's the word, you know that you're at the right dose for you because you will eat less. Number two, maybe you didn't store the medicine properly. Most of these medicines need to be refrigerated. Number three, and this was in one of my comments, how you actually administer the medicine. The medicine is supposed to be in administered subcutaneously. That is under subcutaneously, the top of your skin. That's a little thin layer of fat between your skin and your muscle. And that's where the medicine goes. And why do I tell you this? Because some people insert it in the cutaneous level, i.e. in the skin, and therefore it may not be effective. Remember, the injection site that you choose does matter. Some people like to do it in their thigh. I would just remind you that for many who may not have a lot of fat on their legs, that may result in the medicine going intramuscularly into the muscle. Not effective. The other thing is, remember, it is a needle. I know that's obvious. But needles can puncture the wrong things. They can puncture veins, arteries, and they can puncture nerves. Going over injection technique is crucial. And I actually did get a comment on somebody who had some numbness and tingling, and they may have nicked one of their little nerves. Ask your doctor when you get prescribed the medicine. Tell them to take a look at you and say, is this a good place? They may say yes, they may say no. So we're going to be talking about metabolism and nutrition. The interesting thing is that your metabolism actually changes while you're taking these medicines. And this can actually result in a stalling or a stopping of weight loss, at least according to your scale. Your muscle mass actually determines the rate of your metabolism. On these medicines, when you lose weight, you're also losing muscle. You're also, therefore, slowing your metabolism. Remember, I'm talking about when your metabolism has slowed. You've already lost 15, 20, 25, 30 pounds, and you see things may be slowing down. It's actually really not your fault that your metabolism is slowing. It's actually a sign of your success. You're actually losing a significant amount of weight. There is a way that you can reverse this process. Here's one trick. Exercise. Oh my goodness, exercise. Dr. O, really? Yes, really exercise. We know that when you exercise muscles, it can increase your metabolism. When you use more muscle and your muscle is bigger, your metabolism increases. 
So yes, that means you gotta lift things up and put them down again and lift things up and put them down again. You need to lift some weights. You need to do some squats. You need to take the stairs, anything. You got it? Hey, you know, I'm gonna give you a trick. A trick if you are really struggling, like let's say you have bad knees or you're just really out of shape. Start simply. Simple is better. You know what I like to do? Cross your arms like this and sit in a chair and stand up and sit back down and stand up and sit back down. It seems basic, but actually you use two of the largest muscle groups you have. That's a little trick. Don't say I didn't do anything for you. But now I want to talk about nutrition and I have some good news. How to keep your nutrition healthy and help your metabolism. Ready? Come closer. Protein. Eating protein increases your metabolism. What I mean is it's actually harder, meaning takes more energy for your body to metabolize protein versus, let's say, fat. And some people in the comments said, my doctor told me to eat more protein. Why? Well, that's why. You can actually help yourself by increasing the amount of protein in your diet. Now, you don't want to overdo it because the protein will just hang out there and say, well, I'm not doing anything. They're not using me anymore. I may as well be stored as fat. So you want to increase it, but don't go crazy. And you can discuss the specifics with your physician. This is what I mean by your nutrition, nutritional choices. Choose wisely. Now, do you have to be perfect? No, why be perfect? You wanna have fun, you wanna enjoy, but you also want to succeed. Somehow get those muscles moving and increase the amount of protein in your diet. Let your body work for you. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope this video has given you more insight and I hope this video helps you to succeed. Follow me on Instagram at the Dr. O Method or if you wanna know about the real Dr. O, follow me on your real Dr. O, and you can learn a little bit more about my personal life. This is Dr. O. Goodbye for now. I'm really looking forward to your comments. Thank you very much for watching.